The Spartan began as a design study at the Royal Military College of Science, Shrivenham, for a weapon and fighting vehicle design involving the officers on the group as well as members of the technical staff course. The project was for the design of a close support artillery weapon that would be able to take part in the 1958 tactical battle in nuclear war doctrine. The UK was both at the forefront and also paradoxically a late bloomer in the self-propelled artillery game, with the first platforms being the Mark I gun carriers in World War I. These were built as a result of the tank making its debut on the battlefield and the sudden realization that the conventional horse-drawn artillery could be left lagging behind a more mobile army. The first of these was ready on March 3rd, 1917, participating in a tank trials day. 50 vehicles were ordered by the army to be produced by Kitson and Co. While the thought process was in the right area, they were still hindered by their ungainly designed and never used in anger. Various other systems were experimented with and, running alongside, the UK also built a series of vehicles called Dragoons, a name taken from the simplification of Drag Gun, but these were no more than mechanical mules. What was needed was an all-in-one system, which was solved by the Birch Gun. The Birch Gun, named after General Sir Noel Birch, who was Master General of Ordnance at the time, was a coupling of an 18-pounder gun with a Vickers medium Mark II chassis by the Royal Arsenal. This produced what could be argued to be the first modern SPG, with a front-mounted engine, rotating gun turret, crew that could travel with the weapon, and good cross-country performance. Birch guns were used in the experimental mechanized force maneuvers of 1928, but by 1931 they had all been removed from service. This revolutionary design, which put the army decades ahead of its rivals, went the same way as anything that was new, innovative or remotely useful for the army. Precisely nowhere, as they chose not to use it. This inability or unwillingness to adapt or welcome new concepts would stimmy the British army until the present day, where they still have the same issue. By 1939, the UK realized it was inevitably going to be embroiled in another war with Germany and her allies. Hitler's rise to power and the swift annexation of Czechoslovakia, followed by the invasion of Poland, led the UK to try and rapidly get the next generation of military vehicles into service, as it was clear that mechanized mobility had been key to Germany's successes thus far. Unfortunately, lessons learned with the Birch gun were not replicated, and throughout most of the Second World War, the UK's mobile self-propelled guns were lacking compared to both her opponents and her allies. Post-war, the UK began to reinvest in the concept of mobile artillery and, with new threats looming in the shape of Soviet Russia, new doctrines and tactics had to be accounted for in the design work. Several different vehicles and concepts were initialized. The FV-304 and 305 were to be built on the FV-300 chassis, armed with 25-pounder and 5.5-inch guns. Work stopped with only partial construction of the first, and early layout work completed on the latter. FV-3802 and 3805 were another two programs. The FV-3802 was to be armed with a 25-pounder, while the FV-3805 was to have the 5.5-inch gun. Both were mounted on modified Centurion chassis in rear large casemates. Two prototypes were made, although neither were accepted for service. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voice article. If you like this video, Please do go check out the author's YouTube channel, The Armored Archives. You'll have a link in the description and in the title. He has many more amazing videos, mostly about British tanks and armored fighting vehicles. The introduction of tactical nuclear weapons left the army in need of new tactics based around mobility, counterattack, and survival in an irradiated wasteland that would be the conflict zone. To avoid offering a nuclear strike target, 
the artillery had to be able to concentrate its effort by increased range, rate of fire and lethality, whilst having good mobility to remain dispersed and yet stay in contact. Protection also had to be altered. Open-topped vehicles were unsuitable for this type of warfare, and therefore protection had to be ensured to protect from flash burns, secondary blast effects, as well as conventional threats. The designers decided that heavy and conventional artillery would be required to break through the surviving enemy defenses. Larger long-range field guns would be situated further back from where it's believed tactical nuclear weapons would be used, and so they settled on the mobile medium range of SPGs. Each vehicle would need to be amphibious without preparation, highly mobile with long endurance and carry enough supplies to allow logistic trains to be reformed behind them. Spartan was to be built of relatively thin welded steel armor, stiffened with support braces with priority given to extra room for supplies and the large volume of ammunition that was expected. This increased internal volume also helped with buoyancy. In order to get the high arc of fire required to effectively lob shells over ridgelines and areas in which enemy forces may be hiding, the gun was positioned as high above the vehicle floor as possible to allow for a lower breech drop. To achieve this, the gun cradle was to be suspended from two beams arched across the roof. The fighting compartment housed a five-man detachment, consisting of the commander, two loaders, gunner and driver, and 210 rounds of ammunition. Charges, fuses and other requirements were kept in sponsons on either side. Large rear watertight doors to the back could be opened to assist in loading shells, which were gravity fed to assist the loader in battle. Other than being airtight with an overpressure system to prevent gas, biological and nuclear agents from entering the vehicle, the armor itself was supposed to stop harmful gamma rays while a plastic spore liner would protect against fast neutrons. While the original authors quote the armor would be adequate, correspondence between the author and a nuclear physicist confirmed suspicion that such material would offer little protection against the level of gamma radiation likely to be received. All optical devices had polarizing filters to prevent blindness from nuclear flash. Automotive power was provided by a turboblown supercharged 400 brake horsepower Foden FD12 compression ignition engine, which could run on fuels ranging from diesel, Avtor, kerosene and MT80. Sufficient fuel was carried to allow for a 24-hour operational day, and the power and speed allowed it to keep up with other MBTs at an average combat speed of 24 km per hour. A Merit Brown gearbox and disc brakes were fitted for the final transmission. The entire power pack could be extracted via the rear doors on a pull-out roller sheet due to the gun and seat being mounted from the ceiling. Suspension was via 12 road wheels in 6 pairs either side, via hydraulically adjusted torsion bars, allowing the vehicle to lower itself to the ground to provide a stable firing platform. The gun to be mounted was designed to replace the 25-pounder field gun and the 4.2-inch mortar in service. At high angle, it was to engage targets between 1.4 and 16 kilometers, with a rate of fire of 8 rounds a minute and new ammunition giving a marked performance upgrade over the 25-pounder. The gun itself was a 3.6-meter monoblock non out of fretaged barrel. Out of fretage is a process by which the barrel is produced from a smaller caliber one by increasing the pressure on the inside of the barrel past its elastic limit. This enlarges the inner diameter of the barrel by pushing the inner layers of the barrel outwards, thus increasing the density as well. This gives a higher density barrel with better strength, lifetime and safety. Made from a single forging of high quality steel with a yield of 55 tons per square inch, the gun was fitted with a fume extractor to assist with drawing fumes from the main compartment. The gun was built to handle British 105mm high explosive and high explosive squash head bagged charges. However, an adaption existed to fit a replaceable liner and breech block that would allow it to use the US 155mm rounds if required this procedure taking about two hours. The new round was Torpex-based and had an explosive filler of 3 kilograms, 
offering 250% more effective explosive volume over the older 25 pounder round. The horizontal sliding breech block was fitted with a semi-automatic gear for opening and closing the breech. An automatic tube loading device with tube magazine was incorporated for use when the British ammunition was fired. The ring type cradle had parallel extension members at the rear to take anti-rotational slides for the block. The gun rammer was provided by compressed air in the engine compartment. Sighting arrangements for the gun consisted of a conventional rocking bar sight and a long necked dial sight. Laying for elevation was by means of a quadrant elevation bubble clinometer. A separate anti-tank periscope sight was mounted outside the cupola roof to avoid the effects of heat shimmer on the barrel. The Spartan project certainly identified an area of light self-propelled artillery that was required for the Ministry of Defense, and the factors identified were already being used in several Russian developments, despite there being no common communication between developers. To add credence to this, a few years later the FV-433 Abbott began development, which is remarkably similar in many ways to Spartan, and may well have taken inspiration from the preceding project. That's all for this video. Make sure to follow our website, we'll be releasing new articles on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit, and if you use Discord there's a link to our community server in the description. Also, likes, comments and subscriptions on YouTube are greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us continue to develop and expand, also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.